All right, guys, Jason here. We're back with the SC20H. This was sent to me by a guy who wanted uh, a few mods done. So uh, as I usually do, I'm going to show you what I've done. We'll go through a schematic. Uh, I'll explain the changes. And I will give you a bit of a rundown on the benches, that kind of how I implemented them. The changes here were very much kind of by request from Ryan, who, who owns the SAM. He kind of gave me license to, you know, kind of how I went about implementing them, but he was quite particular with kind of the features or the functions, I guess, that he wanted added to his SC20. And uh, simply what we have is kind of three main mods here, right? Number one, we have a depth pot added to the rear of the amp. You could just add that, right? Any of these three kind of fundamental mods, you could just add either one of them or all three to, uh, to your amp. So we have the variable depth on the rear. Uh, the second mod is a three-way gain switch, which is this mini switch here on the front, and it has three positions. You can hear it pop. That's very normal. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing there is we're changing the, uh, the bias of the second triode, the second gain stage in the amp. So when it, when it rebiases, you get a bit of a pop there. Um, so we have in the middle position the standard uh, 10k cold clipper. Then to the left we've kind of got uh, a, re a reducing cathode resistor which gives more gain, and then all the way to the right is uh, kind of standard, you know, standard kind of Marshall hot rodded second gain stage. And the last thing we have is a push pull. So this gain pot has been uh, changed to a push pull arrangement and the push pull is simply bringing the bright cap in and out enabling you to kind of get that you know that jcm 800 kind of 2203 2204 you know gnarly kind of bright cap or you can push it in and uh the bright cap will be eliminated so let's just go through some tones and then i'll take you through the kind of schematic uh of the mods and as i said we'll go to the bench and have a look at that as well so Here's kind of the you know the go-to uh, gain gained up kind of tone. You can see I've got the EQ here. The presence is at noon. Most of these EQ functions are, or pots I should say, are at midday. The mids are up a little bit. Let's call that 1 p.m. Um, and the preamp gain is up at 3 p.m. And this is um, in. Actually, I'll start. In the middle position which is the uh the kind of the, let's call it the stock 800 sound <laughs> And let's go to the next gain position. Switch to the left. Let's go all the way to the right, Max Gain.
it's too bright for you. We can take that bright cap out, and here's the tones we get. <laughs> Guys, we're going to start by looking at my favourite 2204 scheme that's available on the internet. I believe this was actually drawn by Mark Huss originally, and it's available on his site. It's the best, well, it's the clearest 2204 schematic that I think you will find. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to zoom in and just kind of draw in, um, pretty much in real time, the uh, the changes or the mods that we've made to uh to this sc20 head so zooming into the preamp section of the schematic here um the first thing we're going to be looking at is that first coupling cap right to so 22 nanofarad on the stock 2204 change that to a 2n2 that'll knock out some base on the preamp and the first plate resistor we've changed to a 220k so that first stage has a little bit more gain, which will add some nice compression into the amp uh, as it cascades through. Now this is the switch here that I'm drawing. This is the um, a three-way, so it's an on, off, on switch, right, with you know, three poles on the switch. This was the one that's drilled into the front of the amp. And this is setting up three different uh, configurations for the cathode, that 10K resistor there that you can see. This is the cathode on the second gain stage. So in one position, we parallel in a 4K7 resistor with the 10K. And we have the middle position, which is kind of off, right? So that's the 10K stock. And then the other position, we have a 3K3 in parallel with that 10K. And a 0.68 microfarad bypass cap. So the 3K3 with a 0.68 in parallel with the 10K, that's the maximum gain there. 4K7 in parallel with the 10 is kind of mid gain. And the middle position, which is off, where we have the 10K cathode stock, is the lowest gain mode. And what we're doing here, I'm just I'm just showing rather than drawing it in, that's that one nanofarad cap there. That's the bright cap. And we put this on a switch, right? So that bright cap can be switched in and out of the circuit. And you simply do that by having a single pole um, switch on one leg of that cap. And when we look at the pictures of the mod, you'll, you'll see how that's done, right? So that's on a push-pull pot to, to switch that. The next thing we did is I put a 0.68 microfarad cap across that 820R, 820 ohm resistor, which is the cathode on the third gain stage. I initially tried 22 microfarad there, but it was just too much for this amp, down to 0.68. Gave me a bit more sizzle, a bit more gain, but it kept the amp reasonably tight. And then here we're putting a 470 picofarad across that 100K cathode, um, which uh, just rolls off a bit of top end harshness in, uh, in the amp. And also, I put a 330K resistor, it's going to be hard to draw in here, <laughs> across the gain pot, right? So from lug 1 to lug 3, this is the 330K. I talk about, when I kind of show you how to do the mod, I talk about what impact that has, but effectively it's tightening it up, reducing the gain a little bit. Finally, we're just going to look at the the depth changes here, negative feedback and depth mod changes. So first of all, that 100K resistor, and you can see I put a one meg in parallel with that 100K to drop it down a bit. This gives the amp a bit more negative feedback. I'll talk about this when I go through the, the actual mod pitches and describe that in a bit more detail about why I ended up with one meg there and how I did it. And then we need to kind of 
break the negative feedback line here and insert the uh, the depth pot which was done on the rear of the amp so what I'm doing here I'm just drawing in uh, my pot it's a one meg audio taper you can use a linear one meg linear here um, but I find the audio taper gives you a bit more of a natural sweep and what we do is we put that pot um, configured as a variable resistor uh, in parallel with a 4700 picofarad or a 4N7 uh, cap. All right, guys, let me show you how I implemented this, right, in reference to the schematic that we have just looked at. These are, you know, a handful of, you know, kind of basic mods or changes that you can make to a JCM800 2204 or 2203 style master volume amp. Like when I say 800, I mean those. I don't mean 2205 or any you know, of the other silly stuff that happened under the JCM800 series. Uh, so we'll just kind of work from the preamp end of the board forward. And um, I've got a couple of other photos as well, or, you know, pictures that I'll kind of throw up as we go here. Um, the first mod here is the plate resistor for the first gain stage is a 220k okay so that's you just pull that out pull the 100k out put the 220 in um, this is the first coupling cap uh, for the first gain stage which is a 22 nanofarad it's one of these gray box caps like this one is and you need to pull the board out to replace it or if you're feeling brave, you can actually pull these out. You wiggle them back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, and it'll just come off in your hands. <laughs> and then you've got to clear out the solder pads that are left with your solder sucker. All right, something like this will do. Um, get clear holes in there, and then you can put an axial cap like this in. It fits in really nicely. So, you know, if you're really cautious, pull the board out, do the whole thing. If you're feeling brave, just do what I did. <laughs> pull that pull that cap out, right? It works. Um, okay. Kind of following the signal path here a little bit, we um, we come back onto this, you know, the low high input. After the, f the first gain stage comes back on here and connects between the low and the high. If you know kind of how a 2204 or a 2203 is wired in a standard Marshall, you kind of know that. Um, so using this one of these standard you know Marshall leads that are used on the origin and the studio series I've just clipped the end of it well this end of it and um, why that and to the 470k 470 picofarad treble pica which is again standard 2204 800 um, I think I'll reference the photo to show you how I kind of did that because you've got to the best way to do this is to wire this game pot up before you throw it in. This is a push-pull. And to get that in there, of course, you've got to pull this front board out and remove one of these stock pots. Okay? And um, the best way to do that is with a solder sucker or desoldering gun. If you don't have one, you can just clip it out with cutters but you've got to be careful here's the here's the stock pot that came out and i use my desoldering gun to get that out um as i said if you if you're really careful you'll be able to get it one you'll be able to get it out one of these but it'll take a while if you're impatient you can't be bothered i guess you could cut it out and then just remove the stubs that are left um if you're not doing a push pull like the customer wanted a, a bright cap, switchable bright cap off on. It's a one nanofarad bright cap there. You, you would have seen that in the photo and the schematic. Um, if you're not bothering with that, then you could just leave the, you know, leave the stock set up in here and you wouldn't even need to clip this either. You could just bring the strat onto the board in the normal way. I only put this in here because the guy wants the, um, wants the push pull. Uh, I do have a 330k resistor from the across this gain pot 
and you would have seen me talk about this before if you're a student of my videos um, it tightens up the front end of the amp uh, and pulls some bass out and some gain out and when you're doing this kind of high gain mods it's quite a nice way of just tightening up the front end as well as kind of you know changing this 22 to 2.2 nanofarad reducing the value of the overall gain pot from one meg to you know it's one meg in parallel with 330 um you can adjust that right 470k will give you kind of a bit more gain bit more base or none at all you can do that as well and leave the stock one meg and see if you like it and you can go a bit lower than 330k as well this switch here which is drilled into the front let me just move the camera back a little bit you can see and there's the switch there drilled into the front of the amp uh, gives us a three-way gain structure right so that is across the there's a 10k cathode resistor here this is the standard cold clipper on v2b in this amp second gain stage and the three-way switch here selects between middle position is just the 10k then we parallel in a 4k7 on one side and parallel in a 3k3 with a 0.68 bypass cap okay that is a 0.6863 volt um it's an mkt 1813 cap i've got a whole stack of them thanks to my buddy shay uh, at monomyth and um moving along right so the rest of this front board is completely untouched and stock um the 820 ohm resistor sitting underneath this cap this is the same as one of these it's 0.68 microfarad 63 volt cap that is sitting on top of the 820 ohm resistor which is sitting underneath it right so you just kind of put that on throw that in on top and solder it in um i played with different values here right so i often use 22 microfarad across this 820 ohm resistor on v 2a but for this amp it was just too much it was it was kind of there's too much bottom end this cathode bias power amp just kind of couldn't handle it it was just kind of still sounded a bit bloated to me so 0.68 gives you that extra gain and sizzle uh at that at that third gain stage um but you know keeps it kind of reasonably lean in the base um which worked well in in this amp now uh the other mod on the board i want to talk about the depth in a second but um right over here then let me see if i can get a better a uh, better picture of that so over here this is um r20 this guy here this is a negative feedback resistor it's 100k right so this amp has negative feedback off the 4 ohm tap and a 100k negative feedback resistor um, i played a lot with the negative feedback setup in here in terms of how much negative feedback and found that this cathode bias power amp um, you can't go too heavy with the negative feedback it really starts to become very dull very quickly um, but i wanted to tighten it up a little bit beyond the 100k that was there so this c63 it is on the board on your sc 20 it's not used there's nothing in there it's in parallel it's a, pr a provision for a cap that they never used but it's in parallel with this 100k negative feedback resistor so i ended up with a one meg this is a one meg uh, resistor which is in parallel with the 100k and it's just taking that 100k back a little bit and giving me a little bit more negative feedback um, i found any more than that i tried a whole bunch of values in here found that it just you know as i said the cathode bias power amp just can't kind of gets very flat very quickly uh with too much negative feedback again if you want more kind of zing and, a, and more brightness in the amp overall don't bother just leave that out let's talk about how i did the depth all right you have to forgive me for looking at this it does look a little bit upside down doesn't it but it's the way the amp is set up in the cradle um this is the the rear board of, you know right so the speakers the speaker jacks are sitting along here in the effects loop and so on so we drilled in a depth pot on the rear of the amp 
and um, this is a one meg audio taper pot. It's a 16 mil pot, like a mini, you know, alpha, smaller one. You can use a standard 24 mil, it's fine, right? There's enough room there, but I've got you know, a stack of these, so it's a mini amp, so I wanted to use a mini pot. Um, 4700 picofarad ceramic here. You can use a film cap, 4.7 nano or 4700 picofarad. Um, I just kind of like the sound of those ceramics, they sound cool. And what you need to do is you need to interrupt. So this white wire here, which is looking at the board this way, it's the far most left one on this connector. This is the negative feedback line for the amp. So in the stock amp, this connector here, uh, that white wire just connects directly through. So what I did was I basically cut it, right? Cut it here uh, so that I had enough length on the wire to reach the pot where the pot was. And I've interrupted it effectively and I put the depth circuit um, in the negative feedback line. And then this piece of white wire here is effectively an extension wire, some new new white wire that I put in, in there. And then I've soldered it and heat shrinked it um, back and spliced it in basically. And um, it goes back onto the board there. So your depth is kind of you know, interrupted through this uh, disconnecting these wires and putting the depth pot in the middle of it. So let's go hunting for some parts here guys. This might be helpful for anyone who's actually going to do this mod. Uh, you just need a 1 watt carbon films, right? So I'm just here on Mauser, right? But uh, 1 watt carbon films you can find anywhere. So, you know, this is a 3K3 here. Uh, so you can use these guys here, the CFR series. Uh, they seem to be new at Mauser, they'll be fine. Um, this is the 0.68 microfarad bypass cap that uh, I am using in this mod. So 0.68 microfarad at 63 volts, it's the MKT 1813 series from Vichy. This is a good one. Uh, first coupling cap, which is a uh, 0.0022 microfarad. The good old Mallory M150s. Okay, can't go wrong with these guys. Good kind of mustard style coupling cap. Um, and these are the ceramics that I'm using. Um, this is the 562R series from Vichy. And you can use these. This is the 4700 I'm showing here, which I use in the depth pot. Um, but you could use the, we use these for the uh, one nanofarad or 1000 picofarad bright cap as well. You don't have to use these, you don't have to use ceramics in these positions, but they do work well as bright cap, depth cap style options. You need a couple of pots if you're going to implement this the same way that I did. This is the, I'm at amplified parts here, this is a 16 mil audio taper pot, and you can just choose the you know one meg option here. Um, you can use a regular 24 mil pot on that on the rear there's quite a lot of room in the amp you're not actually short for space there where, where i put it but this is the one that i used and this is the push pull switching pot All right again one meg audio taper double pole double throw um and you can see it's got this you know double pole double throw switch terminals here on on this one so again you can get that from amplified parts